fear not, little flock, for it is your good pleasure, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old and a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Bad preachers have made preaching about stewardship terrible. You can see it anywhere and everywhere. Well, at least on TV. When preachers preach about money and selling your possessions and giving it away, rarely do they mention the needy. More it is sell your possessions and give it to the preacher. Now that's not a suggestion, I'm just telling you what other bad preachers have done. I'm not saying I'm a good preacher, I just wouldn't go that far. Here's the thing about stewardship. There are preachers who preach about it each and every Sunday, no matter what the text says, because they believe that it is a motivation for people. But here's the thing, and I've told the elders this many times, and I've told you guys this, I will only preach on stewardship if the text comes up because when you preach about giving money to the church all the time, it's the same thing as when you preach only law and no gospel, or only gospel and no law. If I only preach law to you, you will think there is no hope of salvation. If I preach only gospel to you, you will not come to fear your own sins. And if I only preach about money, then you're Roman Catholic. You will be giving money as a sign of salvation. The more you give, the more the Lord will give you, and it's all about your best life now. Give so you can get. That's not what Jesus says. In fact, he says you'll be persecuted. We all know what happened to the apostles. Joe Olstein would make a terrible apostle. Because what those men did is that they took the gospel message out into the world knowing that they would die. In a country full of Jews, the Christian's lifespan was even less than a paratrooper in lifespan in Vietnam, which I believe was approximately 20 seconds or something along those lines. But that's how much they treasured the gospel. You know, what motivates us to do what we do as Christians? What motivated paratroopers in Vietnam to do what they did? A sense of that what they were doing it for was worth the cause. That they believed in the freedom that America provides. Well, the Christian too. When you give your possessions. Make sure that you are giving them to what you believe in. If you believe in this church, you will give money to this church. Because where you, and this is true across the board, where you put your money is what you value the most. That's just the fact of the matter. 
And I don't know how many times I've had the discussion, why do, the, why do those uh, Lutherans spend so much money on pretty things when they could be feeding the poor? How many have heard this? Maybe not Lutherans, but anyone. Those big churches so that uh, so that they could why they build them so they could because they could be feeding the poor and, and doing so much good work. And my answer is always, shouldn't we build a bigger building so that the, those who need help know where to find it? There's a reason that we're on this hill. That can be seen from far away. See, the foe is the one who comes in knocking. The foe is the one who comes in and tempts you and says that this is not, the, this is not a cause worthy of your money, nor your uh, love, nor your affection. Your pastor's a bad preacher. Your, uh, you, you, your life is in such peril that there is no room for the church. There is no room for participation. And all we ever hear is about budgets and things like that. But I want to remind you of something that we always forget. <clears throat> Satan is not omnipresent. That means Satan, it cannot be everywhere at, at one time. He is not God. He can only be in one place at one time. So if you have two people in the room saying, well, Satan's really been attacking me. And the other person saying, well, Satan's really been attacking me. You probably have two people with conflicting consciences. We can't blame everything on the devil. We have our own sins as well. And you can't buy your way out of them. That is not stewardship. Stewardship is simply giving to what you believe in. Give to the church for we desire not for uh, financial success as it's preached today. We give money so that other people can hear the gospel and be brought into the church and more and more people can hear the gospel. That's the point. That's what the disciples did. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's the point. That's the whole point. Jesus is saying these words. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of heaven. And so He will. If He cares for the birds and the grass, how much more does He care about you? So, in other words, don't clasp your purse or grab the backs of your wallets or the fronts of your, I don't know where you put your wallet. Uh, but don't, don't cl clutch the pearls when it comes to this because the disciples themselves spent their money doing what? Not buying new, uh, new wonderful things for themselves, but actually giving it as they went as a proclamation of the gospel. That's the purpose of stewardship. That's the purpose of giving to the church so that we may go along and continue to give what we have so that our money bags do not grow old. In other words, cl clutching your purse is what that doesn't quite translate that way in the Greek, but that's essentially what it means. Do not let it grow old. Spend it doing what is good for your neighbor. Because every person who has ever said they could be selling those things and feeding the poor probably has been misled 
about what giving to the church means. Because we learn about stewardship not in the sense of buying salvation and not in the sense of, uh, of self-preservation, but that our first fruits would be given unto the Lord so that His work can be done. And that's the point. Committees, budgets, deacons, all of that is to support the work of the Lord. And so just as you, where your treasure, where you put your treasure is your heart, the same thing is true for Christ. In the painting back there by Ed Riojas, it's called the parable of the buried treasure. And you can see him pulling a casket out of the ground. I love the illustration. I, love, I just love it. Because that's where his treasure lay. His treasure light lay in you. You are his treasure. And he purchased you as his treasure by his own blood, ransomed you. And so, whether you, have, you give two denarii or uh, uh, the least, the, the most that you can, and Christ says, Behold, uh, she has given more than all the others, all the rich people, for she gave away her money, all that she had, not knowing whether she would live tomorrow. And Christ never tells us if she, if she was fed the next day. She gave away all that she had quietly, turned around, and walked away. Because our treasure was in the house of God. And in the presence of Christ, He bought you. Not so that you could give your money to some false prophet or false teacher. He died for your sins. That they would be forgiven. And so they are. Christ is the great steward. He is the one who has bought you at a price. And He's not asking for repayment. I'm not preaching stewardship as repayment. I'm preaching this. You are the treasure of Christ. Put your treasure in Christ. In this sense, I don't necessarily mean your money. I mean your faith, your life, your liberty, whatever else we have to offer. We give it to Christ. Even if it means our heads, even if it means our lives, we give it to Christ because our treasure, our true treasure, lays in the bottom of that font and you carry it with you wherever you go. Right here. And that's something that money can't buy. You can't sell it. It has to be given freely. And so it is. By Christ. Freely. Free gifts of eternal life. Saying, I, Christ saying, I have given you a new heart that desires a new treasure. And that treasure lies for, up for you in heaven. And so that you believe that it's true. I will give you a little slice of heaven here on earth. And there it is. The banquet feast. A foretaste of the feast to come. So that you will believe that what I have ransomed, that, that you who I have ransomed, I have stored 
I will store in heaven. Taste this. Eat of my flesh. Drink of my blood. Believe and know that you are the children of God. And when it comes to stewardship, give as you can. But know this, no money can buy your salvation. No money can buy you status. And if you give in order, if you give to the church in order to receive status, I recommend that you don't give at all. Lest you give in pride and die. But rather let your not let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But look to the right and left hand of Christ, where the nail holes of salvation are, which pour out the forgiveness of sins for you. And there we find the great steward who withheld nothing so that you would be purchased. Nothing can buy that except the Son of God. And that's what He's done for you. He bought you. He ransomed you. He paid for you. You belong to Him. And, he, and the currency that was used was His blood. When that spear entered into His side, the church was created blood and water, baptism and the Lord's Supper given to you so that you would have the sure confidence that you are in Christ and Christ is in you and that you are heaven bound to be with Christ. So never, ever, ever put money in the offering plate thinking that your salvation depends on it. That is bad preaching. That's bad Christianing. It's a response that we desire for Christ's work to continue. But I will not leave this pulpit without saying this. Your money, while it is needed, will not buy you the forgiveness of sins. Because you can't buy a free gift. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go. You have been freely set free. Amen.